Summary Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Book link. Click here. Here is a summary of the praise for Think and Grow Rich. The book has had a tremendous impact and inspired many successful entrepreneurs and business leaders. Many credited for the success of their companies and careers. It is considered the most excellent business book ever written and has transformed many lives. The advice and principles in the book are timeless and still relevant today. Many reread it regularly to renew their motivation and inspiration. The book helps unlock hidden potential and helps people achieve their goals and dreams. It gives people belief in themselves and the persistence to succeed. The book promotes the proper attitude and mindset to achieve success, peace, endurance, and strong relationships. It enriches people's people's lives far beyond just financial gain. The stories and examples in the book are memorable and inspiring. The wisdom and advice apply to people of all backgrounds, ages, and walks of life. The book teaches people to study success, get advice from successful people, and develop the mindset of successful people. By following its principles, anyone can achieve wealth and success. The book has influenced and motivated many to reach for and achieve more than they thought possible. It helps people soar to new heights. The book promotes a spiritual as well as practical philosophy of success. Some see it as a path to enlightenment and truth. In summary, the book has changed countless lives by promoting a positive philosophy of success that is accessible to all. It endures because its principles are timeless. The book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill has been life-changing and inspirational for many people. The editor of this edition, Ross Cornwell, received the book as a gift from his brother 50 years ago and has studied it ever since. The philosophies and principles in the book have positively impacted Cornwell's Cornwell's entire family. Although Hill was friends with hugely successful business people like Henry Ford and John D. Rockefeller, the impact of Hill's Hill's teachings spread much further, influencing millions of lives for the better. When Cornwell first read the book at age 26, he was unhappy, broke, and lacked education or business experience. However, the book taught him principles that allowed him prosperity and success. The book contains timeless wisdom and a formula for success that continues transforming lives today. Cornwell recommends studying and applying the formula to improve your life in ways you can now only imagine. The author lacked confidence and belief in himself, which prevented him from achieving his dreams. However, after reading Napoleon Hill's Hill's Think and Grow Rich, he gained inspiration and focused on what he could do rather than what he couldn't cool didn't. He learned to develop his strengths and manage his weaknesses. He gained respect for his potential and abilities through repeated reading of the book. Today, he owns successful companies operating worldwide. He attributes his success to the lessons in Think and Grow Rich, which he reads daily. He recommends reading the chapter on persistence at least twice a year. He expressed gratitude for Napoleon Hill and his work upon visiting the Napoleon Hill Foundation Library. He urges the reader to read Think and Grow Rich repeatedly to achieve success like millions of others have. The key message is to take advantage of the perfect time, which may never come. Take action now using the principles in the book to achieve your dreams and find success. The book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill has been highly influential. It ranked fourth in a survey asking successful people what books most contributed to their success. It has frequently appeared on bestseller lists, even decades after its initial publication. The book endures because its principles work. For three years, the author served as editor-in-chief of the Think and Amp, Grow Rich newsletter and saw many examples of people applying the principles and achieving success. The book was inspired by Andrew Carnegie, who gave Hill the task of spending 20 years developing and teaching the money-making secret that had made fortunes for over 500 wealthy people. Carnegie believed this secret should be taught in schools to revolutionize education. The secret is mentioned repeatedly in each chapter of the book but not directly named. Those ready to discover it will recognize it. Carnegie tossed Hill the secret quietly, without giving its name so that readers would discover it themselves. The author's author's son discovered the secret himself while reading the manuscript for chapter 1. He used the information effectively in his pursuits. The book aims to teach practical steps to financial independence and wealth, but its most significant value is helping anyone achieve success and gain what they desire. The secret, which Carnegie proved would work for anyone ready to receive it, is now shared within the book's books pages. Examples show how the secret worked for others, including Arthur Nash, saved a failing business, Stuart Austin Weir, changed careers and studied law, Jennings Randolph, used it for a successful political career, and J.G. Chaplin, helped build LaSalle Extension University. Readers who recognize the secret, even if not directly named, and are ready to apply it will gain much. However, Discovering the secret themselves will provide the most significant benefit instead of being told outright. 
Edwin C. Barnes had a burning desire to become a business associate of Thomas Edison. His desire was particular and definite. He wanted to work with Edison, not for him. Barnes initially faced two significant obstacles, he needed to learn Edison and more money for train fare to meet him. However, his desire was so strong that he was determined to find a way. He ended up traveling by freight train to meet Edison. When Barnes met Edison, Edison could tell from Barnes Barnes' expression that he was determined to get what he wanted. Edison decided to give him a chance based on his determination and perseverance. What mattered most in that first meeting was not what Barnes said but what he thought. His appearance and lack of money were against him, but his mindset and determination were what got him to start working with Edison. Success came to Barnes because he became success conscious. His focused, definite desire and determination made him successful. The story shows that thoughts and mindset are powerful in achieving success and overcoming obstacles. Definiteness of purpose, persistence, and a burning desire can translate thoughts into reality. The key message is that having a focused, definite desire and determination can lead to success, as illustrated through Barnes Barnes' story of becoming Edison's Edison's business associate despite significant obstacles. Thoughts and mindset are compelling. Napoleon Hill shares two stories demonstrating the power of persistence. The first is about Thomas Edison's Edison's former partner, Edwin C. Barnes. Barnes was determined to go into business with Edison, even though he needed experience, connections, or fortune. Through persistence and faith, Barnes secured a meeting with Edison and convinced him to let him distribute and market the Ediphone, Edison's Edison's dictation machine. The partnership was a great success and lasted over 30 years, making Barnes wealthy. The story shows that persistence and determination can overcome obstacles. The second story is about R.U. Darby, whose uncle lost a fortune by quitting gold mining just three feet from a rich vein of gold. Darby almost made the same mistake by giving up in the face of difficulties and setbacks in selling insurance. However, he persevered by remembering his uncle's uncle's mistake. Darby went on to become a top insurance salesperson. The story teaches that most success comes just beyond the point of defeat and that persistence is vital. To reinforce the point, Hilt shares a short anecdote about a young girl who got her way by refusing to leave without the 50 cents her mother needed, even when threatened with violence. Her courage and persistence convinced her uncle to give her the money. The story again highlights the power of determination in overcoming obstacles and achieving one's own goals. The examples show that persistence, determination, and faith can overcome setbacks, defeat, lack of privilege or resources, and other obstacles to eventual success and triumph. Success is often attained just beyond the point where most would give up. Here is a summary of the passage. The author tells the story to illustrate the power of determination and belief that the impossible can be made possible. The author relates an incident from Henry Ford's Ford's life when Ford asked his engineers to design an eight-cylinder engine block out of one piece of metal, something the engineers said was impossible. Ford insisted they continue working on it despite their objections. They kept at it for over a year without success. Ford continued to insist they pursue it. Finally, they found a way to do it, demonstrating Ford's Ford's determination and belief in accomplishing the impossible. The author says the story illustrates how determination and belief can achieve great things. Henry Ford became successful because he applied the principles of success, one of which is desire, knowing what you want, we have the power to control our thoughts. The universe adapts to our thoughts and influences us to turn them into reality. It makes no judgment about whether thoughts are constructive or destructive. Our brains become magnetized by our dominant thoughts, attracting people and circumstances that harmonize with them. Before accumulating riches, we must focus our desires intensely on wealth and develop definite plans to acquire it. The story of Edwin C. Barnes illustrates the power of desire. His burning desire to work with Thomas Edison led him to get a meeting with Edison, start in a menial job, and eventually become Edison's Edison's business partner. Barnes succeeded because he chose a definite goal, focused all his energy and effort on it, and was willing to take incremental steps toward it. His desire was not just a wish but a consuming obsession. Desire is the starting point of all achievement. Dreams leading to success are not born of indifference or laziness but intense desire and ambition. Based on the passage, Barnes Barnes' cherished goal was to become Thomas Edison's Edison's business associate. Practical necessities of the dreamer catch the spirit of pioneers who dare to dream big. Their dreams have given civilization all that it has of value. Do not be afraid of new ideas. Those who scorn dreamers are doomed to fail. Now is the best time to be a pioneer. While there may be no new frontiers to conquer, there are new opportunities in business and industry. Dream big like Columbus, Copernicus, Ford, Edison, the Wright brothers, Marconi, Lincoln, and Washington.
they dreamed of new worlds, inventions, freedom, and progress against all odds. Their dreams became realities. A burning desire and ambition are required to make dreams into realities. Dreamers are no longer seen as impractical. Many modern wonders were once dreams. Failure and setbacks help develop the strength of character required to make dreams come true. Many successful people had troubled pasts and failures before succeeding. There are infinite ways that people are led to tap into their imagination and hidden talents. Tragedies and troubles have led many to discover their other selves. It takes no more effort to aim high and dream big than to accept poverty and misery. You get in life what you ask from it. Once you set your sights low, you have to live with it. The author's author's son was born deaf but the author was determined that his son would hear and speak. He knew that where there's tears a will, there's tears away. Our desires can outwit our circumstances and mother nature. Faith and determination can overcome. In summary, the practical necessities for dreamers are vision, ambition, determination, and an open and adaptable mindset. Dreamers imagine new possibilities and have the drive and perseverance to make them real despite facing doubts, failures, and setbacks. Success comes to those who refuse to accept the limits placed on them by circumstance or nature. With belief and persistence, desires can outwit reality. The author's author's son was born deaf and mute. Despite this disability, the author did not accept this as a limitation and was determined that his son would overcome this affliction. The author decided to fill his son's mind with a burning desire to hear and speak. He exposed his son to music and stories designed to build self-reliance and desire to hear. The author discovered that his son could hear when spoken to with lips touching his mastoid bone. The author then translated his son's desire to hear into reality by speaking to him this way and through stories. Gradually, the boy's boy's hearing began to improve. By age 7, he showed his desire and self-reliance by selling newspapers without his mother's mother's consent. This proved that the author's author's methods were working. The boy went through school without special treatment. He tried a hearing aid but it didn't didn't help. In college, he got another hearing aid and could suddenly hear well. This was a turning point. Overjoyed at his new ability, the boy called his mother and heard her voice clearly for the first time. He could now hear radios, movies, teachers, and have regular conversations. His lifelong desire was fulfilled. The boy wrote to the hearing aid company, who invited him to New York. There, he got the idea to help other deaf people by sharing his story. He decided to devote his life to serving people who are hard of hearing. The key message is that desire, faith, and persistence can overcome perceived limitations and adversity. The author created in his son a burning desire to hear and speak, which, combined with action, ultimately allowed him to do so, and then spread this gift to others. With determination, any affliction can be turned into an asset. The author discovered ways to help deaf people through marketing and communication. He created a two-year plan and presented it to the hearing device manufacturing company he worked for. They gave him a position to carry out his plan. The author's author's work allowed many deaf people to overcome their disability. He saw a demonstration teaching deaf people to hear and speak, which showed him the power of desire and faith that he had used to help his deaf son. Doctors said his son should not have been able to hear at all but the author's author's encouragement and his son's desire and faith allowed him to hear. The author believes that desire backed by faith can overcome anything. His son's desire to hear and lead an everyday life, combined with the author's author's faith in his ability, allowed him to defy expectations. The author planted the desire in his son's mind and communicated it to him persistently over many years. His son believed him, and this allowed the desire to become reality. The author cites other examples of desire and faith overcoming obstacles, including a singer who was told she would never succeed but did, and a business associate who survived a dangerous surgery through desire and faith when doctors expected him to die. The author believes desire and faith can lift people to success and help them overcome defeat. He has seen desire and faith overcome disability, poverty, loss of fortune, and more. He says all achievement begins with an intense, burning desire and faith. Faith is a state of mind that can be achieved through auto-suggestion, communicating ideas to oneself through repetition and instruction. Faith, blended with thought and emotion, can tap into infinite intelligence. The emotions of faith, love, and sex are powerful and can open a direct line of communication with infinite intelligence when combined. The primary purpose of reading this material is to learn how to transform desire into its physical equivalent through auto-suggestion and controlling your subconscious mind. Faith is a state of mind that can be developed by applying the principles in this book, including repetition and affirmation of thought impulses to your subconscious mind. 
your subconscious mind will act upon any thought impulse repeatedly passed to it with faith and belief. It will translate that impulse into its physical equivalent. Emotions, especially faith, love and sex, give thoughts more significant action and power. Any thought impulse passed to the subconscious mind with emotion and faith will influence the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind does not discriminate between positive and negative thoughts. It will translate either into its physical equivalent. Negative beliefs and thoughts can lead to misfortune and bad luck. To effectively pass desire to your subconscious mind, do so with belief and faith that it will be carried out. Conduct yourself as if you already have what you want. You can develop faith through self-suggestion and repetition. The dominating thoughts and influences influence faith in your mind. Thought impulses, like electromagnetic radiation, transmit as vibrations through the brain and body. Your mind is constantly bombarded by vibrations that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. Any thought or purpose held in your mind will attract related thoughts and grow in influence. Faith is the eternal elixir that gives life and power to thought. It is the starting point for all achievement and the basis for all miracles and mysteries. It is the antidote for failure and allows you to tap into infinite intelligence. Self-suggestion is how faith can be induced. By repetition, you come to believe and have faith in whatever thoughts you repeatedly suggest to your mind. Thoughts mixed with emotion constitute a magnetic force that attracts related thoughts. Any idea, plan or purpose can be planted in the mind through repetition of thought. This is the concept of auto-suggestion. We are influenced by the vibrations of thought we pick up from our environment. We can reject negative influences and build a positive mental environment. The most significant obstacle for most people is lack of self-confidence. This can be developed using the auto-suggestion formula provided which focuses on visualizing your purpose, demanding development of self-confidence and persistence. The dominating thoughts of your mind will reproduce themselves in action and transform into reality. Focus your thoughts on what you want to become. Confidence is built by one knowing you can achieve your purpose, 2. Focusing your thoughts on becoming that person, 3. Demanding self-confidence through auto-suggestion, 4. Having a definite, written purpose, 5. Providing benefit to all involved, 6. Signing a written formula and repeating it daily. The subconscious mind translates all thought impulses into their physical equivalent, positive or negative. It does not judge, it acts. Negative thoughts can lead to failure, poverty and distress as readily as positive thoughts lead to success. Like electricity, the law of auto-suggestion can be used for good or bad. How you apply it depends on your thoughts and beliefs. If you fill your mind with fear and doubt, the law of auto-suggestion will translate that into its physical equivalent. If you fill your mind with faith and courage, it will translate into its physical equivalent. Success comes down to a state of mind. If you can, the law of auto-suggestion will lift you. If you think you can't can't, it will pull you down. Your mindset will determine your outcome. Within you lies the seed of achievement and genius. It must be aroused and activated through a motivating experience that stirs emotions. Love and faith are two of the most powerful emotions for inspiration and arousal of the mind. Faith has been the foundation of religions and leaders. It is the cornerstone of achievement. With faith, all things are possible. Faith has immense power and influence, as demonstrated by Mahatma Gandhi. He rallied 200 million people and motivated them to act in unison through faith and inspiration. Business and industry will eventually adopt Gandhi's principles of faith and cooperation. Leaders will emerge who can inspire followers and elicit their cooperation. This will lead to greater productivity, human happiness and contentment. The creation of U.S. 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 Steel in 1900 illustrates how applying imagination, faith, planning, persistence and desire can convert ideas into huge fortunes. Charles M. Schwab had the idea to combine many small steel companies into one giant corporation. He shared this vision at a dinner, delivering an impassioned speech that inspired J.P. Morgan and other financiers to undertake this venture. Though no speech transcript exists, it was likely simple but persuasive. Schwab convinced Morgan and others of the potential rewards of this risky but bold move. His enthusiasm, charisma, and clear vision won them over. Prior attempts to consolidate steel interests had failed. It took Schwab's Schwab's determined and inspired advocacy to finally make it happen and bring together a group with the means and influence to make it work. The creation of US 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 Steel was pivotal, demonstrating the power of personality, vision, and faith in achieving unprecedented business success. It has served as a model for big business combinations that came after. The key lessons are that faith, enthusiasm, vision, and public persuasiveness have the power to achieve great success in business and beyond. One determined person with a clear idea can rally forces much more significant than themselves through inspirational leadership. Success at this scale requires boldness, 
ambition, and the ability to convey a vision that others can believe in and work to achieve. Andrew Carnegie created a giant steel company that dominated the industry. J.P. Morgan wanted to create a steel trust, but he knew it could only succeed with Carnegie's Carnegie's company. Charles M. Schwab was the president of Carnegie's Carnegie's company. At a dinner, Schwab gave a speech about the steel industry's future and how greater efficiency and economies of scale could be achieved. Morgan realized that Schwab's Schwab's vision was the key to getting Carnegie to sell his company. So Morgan arranged to meet with Schwab. Schwab didn't didn't know if Carnegie would sell, but he came prepared with detailed financial figures showing the value of steel companies. Schwab insisted that only certain companies should be included. Morgan agreed to move forward if Schwab could persuade Carnegie to sell. Schwab and Carnegie golfed together, and Schwab persuaded Carnegie to sell for around $320-$400 million, equivalent to $10-$13 billion today. Carnegie later regretted not asking for more money. However, J.P. Morgan arranged the deal, and Schwab became president of U.S. 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 Steel, a position he held for decades. The deal sparked controversy over the power of giant trusts. However, manipulators helped push the stock price up quickly, making millions for those involved. Schwab's Schwab's vision and persistence helped turn Carnegie's Carnegie's intangible desire into an enormous physical and financial reality. The author sees it as demonstrating the power of desire, faith, imagination, and persistence. Schwab's Schwab's idea and faith in it were instrumental in creating U.S. 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 steel. So in summary, the key points are, Charles Schwab persuaded Andrew Carnegie to sell his steel company to J.P. Morgan. Schwab had a vision for the potential of the steel industry that aligned with Morgan's Morgan's desire to create immense trust. Schwab's Schwab's persuasive skills and preparation were instrumental in making the deal happen. The deal demonstrated how desire and vision could be turned into physical and financial reality. It led to the creation of US 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 Steel, one of the largest companies in the world at the time. The critical points in this section are, auto-suggestion is self-suggestion, it is the communication between the conscious and subconscious mind. The thoughts that dominate your conscious mind will influence your subconscious through auto-suggestion. No thought can enter the subconscious mind without auto-suggestion except through flashes of insight and inspiration. Your five senses capture impressions, the conscious mind determines which ones to pass on to the subconscious mind. You have absolute control over what reaches your subconscious mind, although most people do not exercise this control. You must read aloud your written statement of desire with emotion and faith for it to influence your subconscious mind. Plain words have no effect. It would help if you reached your subconscious mind with thoughts and words emotionalized with belief. Persistence is key. Your ability to influence your subconscious mind depends on your capacity for concentration and turning your desire into an obsession. You need to visualize what you want with your eyes closed until you can see it, and do this daily. Your subconscious mind will act on your orders in a spirit of faith, even if you must repeat them. You should visualize having the money, demand, and expect your subconscious mind to provide plans to acquire it. Be alert for inspiration and act on it immediately. Take your time with a definite plan. See yourself providing the service or product to get the money. When creating your plan, do not rely entirely on reason. Your reason may be laziness or disappointment. Combine reason with visualization and inspiration from your subconscious mind. The fact that you are reading this book shows you want to succeed. Apply these principles with persistence and faith, and your desire will become an obsession leading to its realization. Desire is the seed, auto-suggestion the soil, and money the fruit. Follow the steps outlined and stay consistent. There are two types of knowledge, general and specialized. General knowledge, while broad, could be more helpful for accumulating wealth. On the other hand, specialized knowledge is focused, targeted, and essential for success. Knowledge itself is not power. Potential power only becomes actual power when organized into action plans. Most education fails to teach students how to organize and apply knowledge. Henry Ford had little formal schooling but was highly educated. Proper education is developing one's own mind to acquire and apply knowledge toward a definite end. During a libel trial, lawyers tried to prove Ford was ignorant by asking him many general knowledge questions. Ford replied that he could summon experts to answer any question and asked why he should clutter his mind with general knowledge he did not need. His reply demonstrated strong logic. The critical message is that specialized, targeted knowledge, organized into action plans, is essential for accumulating wealth and success. General knowledge, for its own sake, is of little use. Success comes from developing specialized knowledge in a field and applying it to achieve a definite end. The summary outlines the fundamental distinction between general and specialized knowledge and highlights why the latter is critical for success, 
using examples from Henry Ford's Ford's life and experiences. The main message is that education should focus on developing minds to assemble and utilize specialized knowledge toward a clear purpose or end. Success comes from intensive specialized knowledge in a field, organized and applied purposefully, not from amassing general knowledge alone. Specialized knowledge is essential to accumulate great wealth. You do not need all the knowledge, you can acquire it through a mastermind group. Identify the knowledge you need based on your primary purpose and life goals. There are several sources to acquire knowledge, experience, cooperation with others, formal education, public libraries, special courses, etc. Knowledge has no value unless it is organized and applied to a definite purpose. Keep acquiring knowledge related to your purpose or profession. Education and knowledge requirements are constantly changing. Specialization is highly sought after today. Employers value specialized knowledge, skills, experience, personality, and ambition more than good academic records. They look for people with leadership potential who can achieve exceptional progress. Practical ways to acquire knowledge include night schools, correspondence courses, self-study materials, apprenticeships, etc. Self-study, in particular, offers flexibility to learn during spare time. Anything acquired without effort or cost is usually unappreciated. Paying for a course motivates you to complete and benefit from it. The self-discipline from a specialized course of study is valuable. The US 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 has a great free public education system, but it is underappreciated because it is free. People value what they pay for. Additional self-study is often needed. Employers highly value employees who pursue self-study and continuous professional development on their own time. It demonstrates ambition and leadership qualities. The most significant weakness is lack of ambition. Scheduling self-improvement during spare time is the key to success. In summary, specialized knowledge and the ambition to acquire it separates the successful from the unsuccessful. It needs to be acquired through deliberate effort and systematically based on your life's life's purpose and goals. Many successful people did not start at the top but worked their way up with specialized knowledge and continuous self-improvement. Stuart Austin Weir, a construction engineer, retrained himself as a corporation lawyer during the Depression and built a successful law practice. An unemployed salesman acquired bookkeeping skills and started a successful bookkeeping business, providing services to small merchants from his offices on wheels. A young woman created an attractive portfolio to help her college graduate son market his services. The portfolio helped him land an executive position at his desired salary in his first interview. Starting at the bottom and working your way up is challenging and can limit opportunities. It is better to start a step or two above the bottom. Dan Halpin, a former football manager took a commission-based sales job selling hearing aids during the Depression. Though the job was undesirable, it opened an opportunity for him. The key message is that continuous learning and self-improvement can help people succeed, even during difficult times. Developing specialized knowledge and skills and looking for opportunities to start at a higher level can help circumvent the limitations of starting at the very bottom. With hard work and persistence, people can work up to more desirable jobs and build successful careers. The imagination is the mind's workshop where all plans and ideas are created. It is vital to progress and success. There are two types of imagination. Synthetic imagination combines existing ideas in new ways. They are used by inventors and in problem solving. Creative imagination provides inspiration and hunches. Communicates with infinite intelligence. Works when the conscious mind is highly energized by desire or emotion. Strengthens with use. Desire alone is useless until given form by the imagination, especially synthetic imagination. The synthetic imagination can be developed and strengthened through use. Transforming desire into reality, like money, requires imagination to form plans and ideas. Synthetic imagination is mainly used for this. Read the book repeatedly to strengthen your imagination through the use and exposure to ideas. Continuous use and practice of imagination can make you a master at converting desire into money. The key points are that imagination, especially synthetic imagination, which creates plans and ideas, is essential to achieving goals and success. It can be strengthened and developed through continuous use and practice. Exposure to new ideas also helps expand and exercise the imagination. Desire is only helpful with the imagination to give it form and direction. Does this summary accurately reflect the passage's key highlights and main takeaways? Let me know if you want me to clarify or expand on any summary part. The passage urges you to use your imagination to transform your desires into concrete action plans. It emphasizes that everything in the universe, including yourself, began as an intangible form of energy before being transformed into physical reality. 
Your desires are mental energy that can be focused and organized through imagination and planning to achieve material form. The passage illustrates this concept with the story of the enchanted kettle. An old doctor sold an ordinary kettle and a secret formula to a clerk for $500. The clerk then added a mysterious extra ingredient, imagination. Combined with action, this imagination built the Coca-Cola empire and generated vast wealth. This demonstrates that any idea, like Coca-Cola, can generate abundant riches if backed by imagination, planning, and effort. The overall message is that imagination is a critical faculty that can translate into material success and abundance when harnessed and applied to your desires and goals. With imagination, any idea that provides value to others has the potential to enrich you greatly. But you must actively cultivate and employ your imagination, you must build plans and put your imagination to work. Imagination is the catalyst, the mysterious extra ingredient, that can make the difference between remaining in intangible forms of energy and achieving real-world results. In summary, use your imagination and the plans you develop from it to express your desires. Any idea or desire backed by the powers of imagination and action can be transformed into wealth and abundance. Imagination is the activating force, the secret ingredient for manifestation and success. Dr. Frank Gonzalez was a young preacher who aspired to head an educational institution where students would learn through experience. He wanted to raise $1 million to fund his vision but needed help to find a way to obtain such a large sum of money. He thought about it constantly but took no action for nearly two years. One Saturday, he decided he must act and committed to raising the $1 million within one week. Shortly after making this commitment, he felt a rush of confidence that the money would come. The following day, he delivered an impromptu sermon on what he would do if he had $1 million. A man in the audience, Philip Armour, was inspired by the sermon and offered to donate $1 million to make the preacher's preacher's vision a reality. Dr. Gonzalez founded the Armour Institute of Technology with donated funds. His story illustrates the power of ideas, imagination, and unwavering desire and determination. By dedicating himself to a clear vision and specific goal, the resources he needed came to him. The ability to develop and sell ideas is a key to success and fortune. Many millionaires prospered by recognizing and acting on powerful ideas. Opportunity often starts with an idea that must be pursued with diligent work and perseverance. The author's author's opportunity to work with Andrew Carnegie planted the seed for his life's life's work developing a philosophy of success. What started as an idea became an obsession and driving force that led to life-changing work. Ideas have a power that transcends their creators and can inspire others for generations. The Golden Rule, Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Christ's Christ's idea of goodness and morality lives on even after he has passed. It continues to develop and spread and may someday fulfill Christ's Christ's vision. Great riches are not the result of hard work alone. They come from having a definite vision and plan and applying proven principles. Success requires action, while failure is due to excuses. The sixth step to riches is organized planning. This requires, forming a mastermind group of like-minded people. Offer them incentives to work with you. Meet frequently until you have a concrete plan. Maintain harmony and cooperation within the group. Plans require teamwork to succeed. Be willing to create new plans if current ones fail. Success is a process of trial and error. Temporary defeat is not permanent failure. Learn from your mistakes. Follow the examples of successful people like Edison and Ford. They persisted through failures and defeats before succeeding. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. Select members for your mastermind group who do not take defeat easily. Leadership requires determination and courage. There are two types of people, leaders and followers. Decide what you want to be. Followers can still become leaders through knowledge and ambition. Leaders require courage, self-discipline, fairness, decisiveness, vision, hard work, a pleasing personality, and action. Develop a plan for marketing your services or ideas. This is how many great fortunes started. Either be a leader in your field or follow an intelligent leader. Followers can still learn and advance to leadership. The summary outlines the key attributes of leadership and the importance of planning, persistence, and vision to achieve success according to the sixth step in the book's book's philosophy. Forming a mastermind group and developing practical plans are central to this step. Success and leadership ultimately come down to determination and action. Followers will not respect a leader who does not demonstrate the following abilities. Sympathy and understanding for followers and their problems. Leaders must be able to see from the perspective of followers. Mastery of the details and responsibilities of their leadership position. Leaders must be well informed and willing to delegate when appropriate. Willingness to take full responsibility for mistakes and failures. 
leaders cannot blame followers for failures and must consider failures their own. Ability to cooperate and get followers to cooperate. Effective leadership is based on cooperation, not force. Avoidance forcing leadership on followers without their consent and sympathy. Forced leadership will ultimately fail. Embracing new leadership methods like cooperation rather than relying on old methods like force. New leadership is needed in business and industry. Avoiding the 10 significant causes of leadership failure, inability to organize details, unwillingness to serve followers, expecting pay for what they know rather than what they do, fear of competition from followers, lack of imagination, selfishness, intemperance, disloyalty, overemphasis on authority, and overemphasis on the title. Recognizing opportunities for new leadership in politics, banking, industry, religion, law, medicine, education, journalism, and other fields where old leadership has failed or new leadership is needed. In summary, effective and enduring leadership requires leaders who can gain the consent and cooperation of followers, understand and serve followers' needs, take responsibility for failures, organize details, and avoid the significant causes of leadership failure. New leaders are especially needed in fields where old leadership still needs to meet the needs of the times. The rapid change in the world requires the media that promote changes in human habits to adapt to these changes. The media described here are the ones that primarily determine the direction of civilization. The information on how and when to apply for a position is based on years of experience helping thousands of people market their services effectively. The most effective ways to connect buyers and sellers of personal services are, employment agencies, choose reputable agencies with a proven track record. Advertising in media, classified ads for clerical jobs, displayed ads for executives. Use experts to prepare compelling copy, personal letters of application, typed and signed, with a qualifications resume. Prepare with an expert. Applying through acquaintances, use connections to approach employers, especially for executive roles. Provide a written statement of qualifications. Applying in person, bring a written statement of qualifications for discussion. A resume should have the following, education, schools attended, subjects focused on, reasons for specialization experience, previous related experience, names of employers, unique experience for the role. References, letters from previous employers, teachers, and prominent people. Include photos. A photo, a professional, unmounted headshot. Apply for a specific role. Don't don't just apply for a position. State the specific job being sought. State relevant qualifications and why you are suited for the specific role. This is the most crucial part. Offer to work on probation at first without pay. This demonstrates confidence and often leads to permanent employment. Show knowledge of the prospective employer's employer's business. This indicates imagination, motivation, and interest. A resume should be carefully and professionally prepared, bound, and printed. Follow up with the employment agency to use your resume to market your services. To get the exact job you want, define precisely the job you want in writing. Create the role if needed. Choose the specific company or person you want to work for. Study the prospective employer, their policies, personnel, and opportunities for growth. Analyze your talents and skills and determine what you can offer the employer. Focus on what you can give rather than what job is open. Have a writer professionally draft your plan in full detail. Present the plan to the proper person in authority. Follow through persistently until the plan is adopted or rejected. The key to marketing one's own services effectively is to recognize that the employer-employee relationship is transforming into more of a partnership that serves the public. Both employers and employees must consider the needs of the public above all else. Success comes from sowing the right seeds, rendering quality service in adequate quantity and a spirit of cooperation. This is summarized as the QQS formula. One's one's ability to market their services depends on the quality, quantity, and spirit of their service. Quality means efficiently performing every detail of one's own's work. Quantity means consistently rendering as many services as possible. Spirit means maintaining a harmonious, agreeable attitude that fosters cooperation. A pleasing personality that enables one to serve in a spirit of harmony can make up for deficiencies in quality or quantity. Those who sell their services are subject to the same rules of conduct as those who sell goods. Everyone in business must now consider themselves partners serving the public. A focus on serving others has replaced high-pressure sales tactics. The capital value of one's own services can be estimated by multiplying one's own's annual income by 16.667, as income represents about 6% of capital value. Brains and abilities are a more desirable form of capital than money alone, as they cannot be permanently depreciated or stolen. Money is only valuable with efficient people leverage it. 
the 30 significant causes of failure stem from weaknesses in oneself and one's own ability to adapt to change. Success comes from cultivating strong traits like definiteness of purpose, self-reliance, imagination, initiative, leadership, continuous self-improvement, tolerance, and persistence. Developing a pleasing personality, finding one's own primary purpose in life, and maintaining a harmonious, cooperative attitude also leads to success. In summary, success comes from self-development, focusing on serving others, maintaining high quality in one's own work, adapting to changes, and developing strong relationships through a pleasing personality and cooperative attitude. Rendering as much value as possible in a spirit of partnership and goodwill is the surest path to success. Here is a summary of the key points. Failure is expected, with 98% of people classified as failures according to the analysis. A small minority achieves success. There are 30 significant causes of failure, including, unfavorable hereditary background, little can be done to overcome a deficiency in brain power, lack of well-defined purpose, no hope of success without a central purpose or goal, lack of ambition, unlikely to succeed without ambition or willingness to work hard, insufficient education, self-education and applying knowledge are most important, lack of self-discipline, must control negative qualities and master self before mastering conditions, ill health, good health is essential to success. Many causes of ill health can be overcome through discipline and good habits. Negative childhood influences, as the twig is bent, so shall the tree grow. Success is difficult without overcoming negative early experiences. Procrastination, the habit of waiting for the right time and delaying action leads to failure. You must start and persist. Lack of persistence, most people start but still need to finish. Persistence overcomes failure. Negative personality, Success requires the cooperation of others, so a negative personality that repels people will not achieve it. Lack of controlled sex surge, the sexual impulse must be transmuted into ambition and action to succeed. Desire for something for nothing, the gambling instinct leads to failure. Success comes from service, not speculation. Lack of decision, successful people reach decisions promptly and change them slowly. Others do the opposite. Indecision leads to failure. Fears, the six basic fears must be mastered to succeed. Wrong choice of mate, an unharmonious marriage leads to failure and misery. Overcaution, both under caution and over caution should be avoided. Life involves chance. Wrong choice of associates, emulate and associate with successful and inspirational people. Superstition and prejudice, open minds overcome these and fear nothing. Wrong vocation, one can only succeed by choosing an occupation one can fully engage with. Lack of concentration, Jack of all trades, master of none. Focus efforts on one chief aim. Extravagance, spendthrifts fail due to fear of poverty. Systematic saving builds courage and success. Lack of enthusiasm, success requires enthusiasm and the ability to convey it to others. Intolerance, a closed mind stops acquiring knowledge. Intolerance of various kinds leads to failure. Intemperance, overindulgence in eating, drinking, drugs, or sex leads to failure. Inability to cooperate. More opportunities are lost due to this than any other cause. It will not be tolerated. Unearned power or money, power and wealth acquired without effort can be fatal to success. Dishonesty, there is no substitute for honesty. Dishonesty ultimately leads to loss in reputation and liberty. Egotism and vanity, these repel others and lead to failure. Guessing instead of thinking, opinions and snap judgments based on guesses lead to failure. Thinking based on facts is needed. Lack of capital, with capital to absorb mistakes and establish a reputation, business success is more accessible. Other causes of failure based on your own experiences. Here is a summary of the passage. The passage outlines 28 questions one should ask oneself for an annual self-analysis and personal inventory. The questions cover topics such as one's own goals and objectives, quality of work, relationships with others, financial situation, use of time, weaknesses, strengths, and opportunities for improvement. The passage states that self-knowledge and self-analysis are essential for success. By understanding one's own weaknesses and strengths, one can work to eliminate weaknesses and capitalize on strengths. Comparing oneself year after year can show progress or lack thereof. Self-knowledge also allows one to understand better what one needs and deserves regarding salary or compensation. The passage describes the many freedoms and opportunities available in the US US US, including freedom of thought and speech. Freedom to choose one's own occupation, freedom to accumulate wealth, freedom to travel, and freedom to live where one chooses. The passage outlines some of the benefits of these freedoms using food as an example, 
showing how Americans have access to affordable foods from all over the U.S., 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 and the world. In summary, the key points are 1. Conduct an annual self analysis using probing questions, 2. Understand yourself thoroughly so you can improve and properly value yourself, 3. The U.S. 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 offers unparalleled freedoms and opportunities for individuals to choose their path in life. 4. There are many advantages to these freedoms, with variety and abundance of affordable food as one example benefit. The summary outlines the essence and key highlights of the relatively long passage on self-analysis, American freedoms, and opportunities in the U. S. U. S. U. S. The core message around gaining self-knowledge to achieve success and making the most of the advantages in America comes through in the summary. Please let me know if you want me to clarify or expand on any summary part. The narrator provides a detailed breakdown of the cost of a simple breakfast for a family of four in America, totaling $2.76. The ingredients and components come from worldwide and the US US US, highlighting the complex system required to provide even a simple meal. The narrator then describes the modern comforts and conveniences the average American enjoys, including affordable housing, electricity, plumbing, entertainment transportation, etc. All of this is available for a modest cost and effort. The narrator attributes these blessings of modern life to capital, not just the accumulation of money but the organization of intelligent, skilled individuals who efficiently use resources to drive progress and benefit society. Capitalists provide the foundation of civilization and prosperity. The narrator paints an absurd scenario of one person trying to source all the ingredients for a simple breakfast alone without the aid of capital and organized systems. This demonstrates how impossible modern living standards would be without capitalists and capital. The capital required to deliver goods is staggering for transportation and infrastructure. Moreover, that is on top of the capital required for actually producing goods and materials in the first place. The narrator acknowledges that capitalists are often maligned as predatory interests but argues they provide an essential service to enable civilization and prosperity. The analysis aims to show that anyone seeking success must understand and work within the capitalist system. In summary, the narrator makes a case for the essential value of organized capital and capitalists in enabling the advanced standard of living enjoyed in America. Despite some criticisms, capitalism has provided the foundation for progress. The passage argues against those who criticize capitalism and organized capital. The author says the US 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 is a capitalist country that has provided freedom and opportunity to many. While people are free to think what they want, the only way to accumulate wealth legally is by providing helpful service. The author then lists many statistics showing how much Americans spend on various goods and services each year, indicating many opportunities to accumulate wealth by participating in producing and distributing these goods and services. The author says anyone can engage in business and earn a living, and those with talent and skill can earn a lot. The passage argues that the capitalist system and organized capital have made America wealthy and provided economic freedom and opportunity. The author acknowledges the US 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 is a free country and people can ignore the law of economics but says there will ultimately be consequences for trying to accumulate wealth through force or raiding the public treasury. The main point is that true freedom and opportunity come through participating constructively in the capitalist system by providing valuable services. The summary touches on the key arguments and evidence presented in the passage with little wordiness or repetition from the original text. The central claims and themes around capitalism, freedom, opportunity, and service are captured. Please let me know if you want me to clarify or expand the summary in any way. The author discusses the importance of prompt decision-making and avoiding procrastination. He argues that quick, firm decisions, followed by slow changes, were a hallmark of successful individuals like Henry Ford. In contrast, the habit of slow decision-making and quick changes is a cause of failure. The author warns against being too easily influenced by the opinions of others. He says you should keep your plans and decisions private and only share them with like-minded people. Share your ideas too openly, and others may work against you out of envy. It is best to listen more than you speak. Significant decisions often require courage because they involve risk. The author gives examples of courageous decisions, Lincoln freeing the enslaved people, Socrates drinking poison rather than renouncing his beliefs, Lee joining the Confederacy in the Civil War, and the Founding Fathers signing the Declaration of Independence. The most crucial decision for Americans was the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The author says we must often understand the natural forces behind historical events like the American Revolution. We give too much credit to leaders like George Washington and need more to the intangible power that ensured freedom. This power is available to anyone who faces difficulties with determination.
The story then shifts to an event in Boston in 1770 that demonstrated this power. The colonists resented the presence of British soldiers in Boston. Tensions escalated, leading to the Boston Massacre in 1770, where British soldiers killed several colonists. This incident angered the colonists and led prominent leaders like Samuel Adams and John Hancock to demand the removal of British troops from Boston. The British then appointed Thomas Gage as the new governor of Massachusetts, hoping to quell the unrest. However, Gage's Gage's actions and threats further angered the colonists. When Gage tried to bribe Samuel Adams to stop his opposition, Adams refused and boldly declared his loyalty to the revolutionary cause. In response, Gage declared that Adams and Hancock were wanted men, accepting them from a pardon offered to other colonists. This threat forced Adams and Hancock to call a secret meeting of revolutionaries. They locked themselves in a room until the group agreed to organize the First Continental Congress to coordinate the revolutionary effort. The Congress first met in 1774. Around the same time, Thomas Jefferson published a summary view of the rights of British America that argued the colonists' colonists' position. Patrick Henry declared that if Jefferson's Jefferson's arguments amounted to treason, then make the most of it. After two years of debate, the Continental Congress adopted Richard Henry Lee's Lee's resolution declaring independence from Britain on July 2, 1776. The Congress then spent two days editing the Declaration of Independence, which was adopted on July 4, 1776. So, in summary, tensions with Britain escalated in the 1770s, especially in Massachusetts. Key leaders like Adams, Hancock, and Jefferson argued for more radical action, while the First Continental Congress allowed the 13 colonies to coordinate their efforts. The Congress ultimately declared independence in 1776, led by Lee's Lee's resolution and the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence resulted from a decision created by a mastermind of 56 persons. It marked the birth of the first free nation in the world. The power that gave freedom to America is available to any individual who develops and uses it. This power consists of 13 principles, desire, decision, faith, persistence, mastermind, and organized planning. The story of gaining independence demonstrates how thought backed by desire can be transmuted into its physical equivalent. There is nothing mystical about this process. It utilizes the laws of nature available to anyone, those who make prompt, firm decisions know what they want and usually get it. Success in most walks of life goes to those with decisiveness. Schools often need to teach students the importance of decision making as a habit. Indecision becomes a habit and part of one's own character unless corrected. It leads to drifting through life rather than controlling your destiny. Financial freedom and success go to those who decide to achieve a specific goal. Success requires courage to reach decisions and determination to see them through despite difficulties or opposition. Every failure carries the seed of equal success. Persistence is essential to achieve one's own goals. The basis of persistence is willpower. Great leaders in business and industry are often misunderstood as ruthless, but what they have is persistence and determination. Success usually requires the application of all 13 principles of the philosophy and significant persistence despite obstacles or setbacks. Lack of persistence is a common weakness that can be overcome by developing a burning desire. Persistence comes from the intensity of one's own desire or purpose. The first test of your persistence comes in taking the six steps outlined in Chapter 1. The eagerness with which you follow these steps indicates your level of persistence. Lack of persistence is a weakness that can be remedied by fanning the flames of one's own desire. In short, you must build a fire under your dreams and goals. Persistence is essential to accomplishing anything worthwhile. Develop persistence and determination, no goal will be out of your reach. The passage emphasizes the importance of persistence in achieving success and accumulating wealth. Persistence is the ability to continue striving towards a goal or task regardless of difficulties or setbacks. The author argues that most people who achieve a fortune or notable success demonstrate persistence. Some key points on persistence. Persistence can be developed and strengthened through conscious effort and habit. It is a state of mind. Definiteness of purpose, knowing what you want is critical to persistence. Strong motivation can help overcome obstacles. Desire. Pursuing goals you have an intense desire to achieve persistently is easier. Self-reliance. Believing in your ability to follow through on plans and achieve goals fosters persistence. Definiteness of plans, concrete, organized plans, however imperfect, promote persistence. They provide direction and smaller milestones. Accurate knowledge, understanding the requirements and difficulties of a task allows you to persist in the face of challenges. You have to know what you are you are up against. Cooperation, the support and encouragement of others help strengthen persistence. Working with a mastermind group can aid persistence. Willpower. 
persistence requires willpower and the ability to overcome tendencies to quit in the face of defeat or difficulty. Developing willpower takes practice and habit. Incentive, a solid incentive, like a reward, helps motivate persistent effort. For many, the reward of success or achievement is incentive enough. The author views persistence as essential to accomplishing notable success or wealth. With cultivation through habit and the right mindset, persistence can be developed and strengthened in anyone. However, it requires conscious and continuous effort. To develop persistence, have a definite purpose backed by a burning desire. You must have a strong reason and motivation to achieve your goal. Develop a definite plan and take continuous action. Don't don't just wish for something, take steps each day that will move you closer to your goal. Persistent action and follow-through are essential. Build a mental shield against negative influences. Don't don't listen to naysayers or let self-doubt hold you back. Stay focused on your purpose and plan. Find support from others. Connecting with like-minded people who will encourage your efforts can strengthen your persistence. In short, persistence comes from having a clear purpose, planning, taking action, ignoring distractions slash negativity, and building a support system. With practice and habit, persistence can become second nature. However, it starts with deciding what you want, mapping the steps, and following through daily. Develop a burning desire for what you want. Cultivate your passion and keep it alive. Mrs. Simpson and King Edward had a burning desire to be together, which gave them the persistence and courage to overcome immense obstacles. Be true to yourself. Do not let others dictate how you should live your life. King Edward and Mrs. Simpson were true to their desire for love despite enormous criticism and pressure to conform to social expectations. Persist in the face of discouragement and indifference. King Edward and Mrs. Simpson persisted for many years before they could finally be together. Muhammad persisted for over a decade in the face of ridicule and banishment before people began to accept his message. Persistence in the face of difficulty and discouragement is a hallmark of mastery. Pay the necessary price. King Edward gave up the British throne, one of the most powerful positions in the world, for the woman he loved. While the price may seem too high to others, it was worth it to him. Mastery requires sacrifice. Develop definiteness of purpose. King Edward, Mrs. Simpson, Muhammad, Edison, Ford, and others were clear on what they wanted and relentlessly pursued it. A definite purpose gives direction and motivation to persist in facing obstacles. There appears to be a spiritual or mystical power in persistence that gives access to greater forces. The achievements of persistence masters like Edison, Ford, and Muhammad seem astonishing and superhuman. Their persistence connected them to a higher power which aided their efforts. Persistence unlocks spiritual forces and energies that are not accessible to those who give up easily. In summary, mastery of fear, discouragement, and indifference requires a burning passion, courage to be true to yourself, persistence in the face of difficulties, a willingness to pay the necessary price, a definite purpose, and a belief that persistence provides access to spiritual power. With these, fear, discouragement, and indifference can be overcome. Composites such as Wallace Simpson and the Duke of Windsor demonstrated the power of persistence against all odds. Persistence creates faith, which is essential for success and achieving one's own goals. Plans are useless without power, and power comes from organized and directed knowledge. There are three significant sources of knowledge, infinite intelligence, accumulated experience, and experiment-slash-research. Power can be gained through the mastermind principle which involves the coordinating knowledge and effort between two or more people working in harmony toward a definite purpose. The mastermind principle has an economic benefit in allowing people to achieve more together than anyone could alone. It also has a psychic benefit in that minds coming together create a spiritual force like a third mind. Energy and matter are the two primary components of the universe. The human mind is a form of energy that can be coordinated with other minds. Groups of minds working together have more thought energy than a single mind. Examples of the mastermind principle are Andrew Carnegie's Carnegie's Steel Empire and Henry Ford's Ford's success after befriending great minds like Edison and Firestone. Ford absorbed their knowledge and way of thinking, gaining more brain power and achieving more. The mastermind principle is available to anyone to use. Individuals take on the nature, habits, and power of thought of those they associate with in harmony. Mahatma Gandhi was an influential leader who led India to independence from British rule through non-violent civil disobedience. Despite his eccentric appearance and unusual attire, he was a compelling figure who gained a massive following of over 200 million Indians. Gandhi attained this immense power and influence by achieving cooperation and harmony among his followers for a shared purpose. Inducing large groups of people to cooperate this way is extremely difficult and rare, demonstrating Gandhi's Gandhi's effectiveness as a leader.
the key sources of Gandhi's Gandhi's power were, connecting to infinite intelligence. By harmonizing the minds and actions of millions of followers, Gandhi was able to tap into a tremendous power that exists in the universe. This is the most significant source of power available to any leader. Understanding the power of sex energy and transmuting it. Gandhi likely harnessed the creative power of sex energy and channeled it into his leadership and activism. This process of sex transmutation involves redirecting one's own thoughts and actions from the purely physical expression of sex to more constructive purposes. With discipline and willpower, the motivating force of sex can be used to achieve genius levels of imagination, courage, persistence, and creativity. Recognizing and utilizing the power of the mind. Gandhi understood that where people end up depends on which side of the stream of life their mind flows. The positive, optimistic side leads to fortune and success, while the negative, pessimistic side leads to poverty and misery. Gandhi was able to propel the minds of millions to the positive side of this stream through his philosophy and leadership. In summary, Gandhi attained immense power and influence by achieving an unlikely level of cooperation and harmony, harnessing the creative energy of sex transmutation, and helping steer the minds of millions in a positive direction. Despite his simple appearance and attire, Gandhi demonstrated that he understood human psychology and the sources of power far better than most. His passive yet forceful leadership led to the independence of India and served as a model for leaders everywhere. The human mind responds strongly to the desire for sexual expression. This is the most robust and most intense of 10 stimuli that can stimulate the mind. Genius level performance can be achieved by transmuting the energy of the desire for sexual expression. Genius is developed through tapping into the sixth sense, the faculty of creative imagination. The creative imagination links the finite human mind and infinite intelligence. It is the source of hunches, inspirations, and insights. The sixth sense marks the difference between a genius and an ordinary person. The creative imagination functions best when the mind is stimulated and operating at high intensity and concentration. Various mind stimulants can raise the mind to this level, allowing access to ideas and thoughts not available at lower levels of thought. Examples show that closing one's own eyes can help tap into the sixth sense and creative imagination. Many well-known geniuses, artists, and inventors have developed the ability to tap into the sixth sense through practice and use. The creative imagination can be deliberately cultivated and developed through use and practice. Relying on it as a source of inspiration and ideas can lead to genius-level achievement. In summary, the emotion of sex and the desire for sexual expression is a potent mind stimulus that can be transmuted and used to tap into the creative imagination, the sixth sense that is the hallmark of genius. This faculty can be developed with cultivation and practice to achieve remarkable creative insights and accomplishments. Dr. Gates made a living coming up with ideas for individuals and companies. Even though they may not have realized it, large corporations paid him substantial fees to help them develop new ideas. The average reasoning faculty must often be revised because it relies on limited past experiences. Ideas from the creative imagination are more reliable because they come from a higher source. Geniuses use their creative imagination. Ordinary inventors, or cranks, do not have access to this faculty. Scientific inventors like Edison and Gates use both imagination and reasoning. They first organize existing ideas through reasoning, then use creative imagination if more is needed. Geniuses stimulate their minds to function on a higher, more intense level using techniques like, focusing on the known parts of a problem and picturing the solution. Relaxing their mind until the answer flashes into their mind. Edison tested over 10,000 idea combinations through reasoning before a creative insight gave him the light bulb. His experience inventing the phonograph was similar. There is evidence that creative imagination exists from the achievements of people without much education, like Lincoln. He discovered and used his creative imagination after meeting his wife, and Rutledge. Many great leaders and thinkers, like Napoleon, Shakespeare, and Emerson, were positively influenced by their spouses. The stimulation of sex can lift people to higher levels of thought. Unfortunately, most do not discover this. Nearly all geniuses and great achievers were driven by a strong sex drive that was transmuted into another form of desire and action. Sexual energy is the creative energy of most geniuses. Merely possessing this energy is not enough, however. It must be transmuted. Most people do not succeed until after age 40 because before this, they dissipate their energies through overindulgence in physical sex. After 40, this energy can be harnessed and transmuted into achievement. Artificial stimulants like alcohol and drugs have enabled some, like Poe and Riley, to access genius-level thinking. However, these often lead to destruction. Nature's nature stimulants like love, sex, and autosuggestion are safer ways to stimulate the mind. Human emotions, not reason, 
rule, and shape civilization. The creative faculty is set in motion through emotion. Emotions, not logical reasoning, primarily drive human actions. The strongest human emotion is the sexual urge. While there are other stimuli that can energize the mind, none are as powerful as sex. A mind stimulant can temporarily or permanently increase the intensity, focus, and creativity of thought. The ten commonly used mind stimuli, significantly, when combined, can help one connect with infinite intelligence or access the subconscious mind. A study found that people with strong sex drives often make the most successful salespeople. This is because sex energy translates to personal magnetism and charisma. This energy can be communicated through, handshakes, a firm, enthusiastic handshake shows magnetism. Voice, a musical, charming voice indicates the presence of sex energy. Body language, graceful, energetic movements reflect a strong sex drive. Thoughts, sexual thoughts or mixing sexual emotions with regular thoughts can influence others. Appearance, those with strong sex drives focus on their physical appearance. Sales managers look for signs of personal magnetism from sex energy and enthusiasm. Strong sex drives fuel enthusiasm and the ability to inspire others. Public speakers, lawyers, preachers, and others who influence people rely on sex energy and appeal to emotions. Sex energy can be transmuted into career enthusiasm and success. Top performers have mastered transmuting sex energy into drive and determination for their work. Most do this unconsciously. It requires willpower but is rewarding. There are many misconceptions about sex. Strong sex drives are often viewed as abnormal or shameful, but they are natural and can be a blessing if adequately harnessed. Sex only becomes a vice when misused or indulged excessively. Many great leaders and creatives were inspired by someone they loved. But intemperance in sex can be as destructive as overindulgence in food or alcohol. It drains life's life's energy and imagination. Widespread ignorance about sex leads to harmful behaviors and missed opportunities. Society's society's discomfort with openly discussing sex has left many uninformed. Creativity and achievement peak between ages 40 to 60. Most successful people do their most significant work during this age range. Sexual energy and emotions become more balanced and harmonious during one's own 30s and 40s, contributing to this peak in productivity and success. The subconscious mind is the connecting link between the conscious mind and infinite intelligence. It is constantly at work, day and night. It receives the domineering thoughts an individual chooses to accept and mixes them with emotion and belief. The subconscious mind then takes those dominating thoughts and uses them to transform one's own desires into their physical equivalent. The subconscious mind uses whatever practical media is available to manifest the individual's individual's desire. The subconscious mind does not discriminate between positive and negative input. It will accept any thoughts and beliefs, regardless of whether they are beneficial or harmful. It is up to the individual to voluntarily plan thoughts, plans, and purposes into the subconscious mind to be transmuted into the desired outcome. The subconscious acts first on whatever thoughts and beliefs are infused with intense emotion and faith. Positive and negative thoughts cannot occupy the mind at the same time. One will always dominate the other. Understanding how to control thoughts and input is essential to achieve the desired outcome by tapping into the subconscious mind's power. The subconscious can be directed through thoughts and beliefs charged with emotion to attain the desired physical equivalent. In summary, the key points are, the subconscious mind connects the conscious mind to infinite intelligence. It constantly works to transform dominant thoughts infused with emotion into physical reality. It accepts any thoughts and does not discriminate between positive and negative. Individuals must voluntarily plant desired thoughts and beliefs into the subconscious. The subconscious first acts on thoughts of intense emotion and faith. Positive and negative thoughts cannot occupy the mind simultaneously, one will dominate. Directing the subconscious is critical to achieving desires and success. The subconscious can be directed through thoughts and beliefs infused with emotion to manifest what is wanted. Your subconscious mind can be influenced voluntarily to a certain extent through habit and following the instructions described in the book. However, you cannot entirely control your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the intermediary between the human mind and infinite intelligence. It receives prayer and transforms it into its spiritual equivalent. The possibilities of the subconscious mind are vast and humbling. First, use your subconscious mind to accept its existence and understand its possibilities. Then make your desires clear and write them down. Be persistent in following the instructions. Success requires habit and faith. Your subconscious mind is permanently active, if you don't don't direct it. It will act on random thoughts and impulses. It would help to feed it the desires and thoughts you want it to actualize. 
Both positive and negative thoughts reach your subconscious mind all the time. You need to shut out negative thoughts and implant positive thoughts of desire. All creation begins with a thought. The imagination allows thought impulses to be assembled into plans. Mix thoughts with faith in your imagination to translate thoughts into their physical equivalent. The subconscious mind responds most to thoughts mixed with emotion or feeling. There are seven primary positive emotions and seven primary negative emotions. Positive emotions need to be injected into thoughts for the subconscious mind. Negative emotions will enter automatically. Master the positive emotions. To influence your subconscious mind, you must understand how to communicate. Speak its language of emotion and feeling. Fill your mind with positive emotions of desire, faith, love, sex, enthusiasm, romance, and hope. Avoid negative emotions like fear, jealousy, hatred, revenge, greed, superstition, and anger. Prayer succeeds when you pray with faith and desire, not fear and doubt. Your subconscious mind and infinite intelligence will only act on the emotions you convey, so make sure your prayers are infused with positive emotions. If there is fear, the prayer will not be effective. The author posits that the human brain is a broadcasting and receiving station for thoughts. Under the right circumstances, brains can pick up thought impulses from the brains of others. The creative imagination is the receiving mechanism in the brain that picks up thoughts from four sources, infinite intelligence, one's own subconscious mind, the conscious minds of others, and the subconscious minds of others. It is stimulated by powerful emotions, whether positive or negative. Only highly energized thoughts, amplified by emotions like sex, are transmitted between brains. The creative imagination becomes highly receptive in this state and plucks ideas out of thin air. It also gives one's own thoughts the necessary emotional intensity to be picked up by one's own subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the broadcasting mechanism that transmits thought impulses. The creative imagination is the receiving mechanism that picks them up. Autosuggestion is the method by which one activates one's own mental broadcasting equipment. One needs to understand and apply three factors to use one's own mental broadcasting station, the subconscious mind, the creative imagination, and autosuggestion. Desire stimulates this process. Humans have long depended too much on their physical senses and have limited their knowledge of the physical world. We are entering an age where we will better understand the intangible, invisible forces that shape our world, like the power of the oceans, gravity, thunderstorms, etc. The other self may be more powerful than our physical self. We are all controlled by unseen, intangible forces. That's that's a summary of the author's key ideas and arguments in this section on the brain as a broadcasting and receiving station for thought. Let me know if you want me to clarify or expand on any summary part. The sixth sense is the ability to intuit knowledge and wisdom from an unseen, intangible source. It is the apex of the think and grow rich philosophy and can only be developed by first mastering the other principles described in the book. The sixth sense is the portion of the subconscious mind referred to as creative imagination or the receiving set through which flashes of intuition and inspiration come. It allows a person to access infinite intelligence and receive warnings of danger or knowledge of opportunities. When the sixth sense is developed, one has the aid of a guardian angel to guide them to wisdom. While the author does not believe in miracles, developing the sixth sense through following the principles in the book will open the temple of wisdom. The main ideas are, the sixth sense provides access to infinite intelligence and intuition. It builds upon mastery of the other success principles. It allows one to receive insight and guidance from an unseen source. When developed, it helps warn of dangers and identify opportunities. Following the principles opens one to wisdom and guidance from a guardian angel. The author believes the sixth sense works within the laws of nature rather than being supernatural. The sixth sense is described as creative imagination or the mind's receiving set. The sixth sense is a natural intuitive ability gained through mind development. It allows tapping into infinite wisdom and receiving knowledge and guidance guidance from a higher source. One can access this higher intuition by following the think and grow rich principles. The author describes adopting the habit of recreating imaginary meetings with historical figures whom he admired. He chose nine figures, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Thomas Paine, Thomas A. Edison, Charles Darwin, Abraham Lincoln, Luther Burbank, Napoleon Bonaparte, Henry Ford, and Andrew Carnegie. In these imaginary meetings, the author would ask each member to impart wisdom, knowledge, or characteristics that allowed them to achieve what they did. For example, the author asked Emerson to share his understanding of nature, asked Burbank to share his ability to harmonize natural laws, asked Napoleon to share his ability to inspire and motivate, and so on. Over time, the author's imaginary versions of these figures developed distinct personalities and habits. 
For example, Lincoln was often late and solemn, Payne and Burbank often exchanged witty jokes, and Napoleon did not appreciate jokes about religion. The purpose of these imaginary meetings was for the author to acquire valuable character traits and skills through auto-suggestion. By imagining conversing with and learning from these figures, the author believed he could reshape his character to emulate the traits of his invisible counselors. Several figures share wisdom with the author, such as Lincoln warning him that he will need courage to overcome difficulties, but that ordinary people have common sense. Edison suggests the author will witness the discovery of the secret of life. In summary, the key ideas are that the author used a process of imagination, auto-suggestion, and emulation to acquire beneficial character traits and wisdom from the historical figures he admired most. Over time, this process resulted in vividly imagined interactions with these invisible counselors. The author attends imaginary meetings with historical and philosophical figures to stimulate his mind and gain insight. Though he acknowledges these meetings are not real, he believes they have provided him valuable inspiration and guidance guidance. The author credits these invisible counselors with helping him solve problems by activating his sixth sense, an intuitive mental faculty that provides information beyond the five physical senses. The sixth sense tends to activate in times of stress or emergency. The author suggests that many successful historical figures like Ford, Edison, and Napoleon were adept at using their sixth sense. However, it often only fully develops in middle age. Using the sixth sense requires time and practice. The chapter on the sixth sense is included to provide a complete self-help philosophy that can lead to understanding oneself, others, and achieving happiness, not just material gain. Developing and using the sixth sense lifts one's mind to a higher level of stimulation and empowerment. The next chapter will discuss overcoming six common fears that are the source of many negative traits like discouragement, procrastination, and lack of ambition. These fears only exist in one's mind. Overcoming fear involves replacing fear with faith. The key ideas are, imagination and intuition can be powerful tools for insight and guidance guidance. The sixth sense, intuition, develops with time and can help in problem solving and decision making. Many successful people were adept at harnessing intuition. Intuition increases with age and experience. Developing intuition requires an open and stimulated mind. It can lead to greater understanding, empowerment and achievement. Common fears holding us back only exist in our minds. Overcoming fear involves building faith and intuition. The author discusses the six basic fears that afflict humans, the fear of poverty. The author argues that this is the most dangerous fear that paralyzes reason and imagination. It leads to misery and unhappiness despite living in a world of abundance. The fear of poverty grew from humans' tendency to prey on each other economically. Humans get satisfaction from eating each other financially rather than physically. This fear causes immense suffering and humility. The fear of criticism, the author says unjust criticism should be ignored while constructive criticism should be used for improvement. The fear of ill health, the author recommends forming a clear mental image of physical fitness to overcome this fear. The fear of loss of love, the author suggests cultivating new friends and relationships to overcome the fear of losing love. The fear of old age, the author recommends cultivating hobbies and sources of enjoyment to overcome the fear of old age. One should also stay connected with youth. The fear of death. The author suggests accumulating knowledge about the mind over matter and eternal life to overcome the fear of death. One should develop a deep faith and belief in spiritual values. The author argues that humans have absolute control over thought. Thought translates into physical equivalent. So fearful thoughts translate into fearful realities. By controlling thoughts, one can overcome fears. Desire is the starting point to overcoming fear and achieving riches. One should refuse poverty and demand riches to attain success. Each person is responsible for their mindset and overcoming fear is a matter of mental determination. Self-analysis and self-examination can reveal one's weaknesses and flaws, which most people do not like to acknowledge. However, facing these hard truths is essential for growth and success. This type of deep analysis requires impartiality and honesty. Most people claim they fear nothing, but in reality, fear, especially the fear of poverty, binds and limits many people. The fear of poverty manifests in many ways, including indifference, indecision, doubt, worry, overcaution, and procrastination. Money is a sensitive topic for many. Although money alone does not define success or happiness, financial freedom and stability are deeply desired by millions. Poverty can crush one's spirit and confidence. With money, one can recover self-respect and ambition. The fear of criticism is also widespread. It likely originates from humanity's tendency to take from others and justify those actions through criticism. The fear of criticism manifests in petty and trivial ways, 
like following fashion styles, and more significant ways, like doubting one's opinions and values. Many mature adults continue to disbelieve ideas they were taught in childhood but lack the courage to stand up for their true beliefs openly. According to the author, self-examination, facing hard truths, and overcoming fears like poverty and criticism are essential to growth and success. Although challenging, one must search for impartiality and honesty within oneself. Money, while not defining happiness, is deeply tied to self-confidence and ambition. Moreover, the fear of criticism often prevents one from standing up for one's authentic values and beliefs. Here's a summary of the key points. Most people are reluctant to openly deny certain religious beliefs out of fear of criticism and social ostracism. This is mainly because societies have historically punished dissenting or critical views. Fear of criticism inhibits people and prevents them from reaching their full potential. It damages self-confidence, imagination, individuality, and self-reliance. Parents often damage their children by criticizing them excessively. Criticism is abundant but unhelpful. It should be recognized as a severe offense. Employers and parents should provide constructive feedback rather than criticism. Symptoms of fear of criticism include, self-consciousness, lack of poise, weak personality, inferiority complex, extravagance, lack of initiative, and lack of ambition. Fear of ill health stems from fears of death and aging and predatory practices in healthcare and wellness industries. Imaginary illnesses can sometimes manifest as actual physical symptoms. Disease can be caused or spread by negative thoughts and suggestion. Disappointment, worry, and negative thinking contribute to fear of ill health. Symptoms of fear of ill health include, inappropriate auto-suggestion, hypochondria, lack of exercise, susceptibility to illness, and self-coddling. In summary, Fear of criticism and fear of ill health are common but counterproductive. They arise from negative social and mental influences but feed into negative thinking and behavior cycles. Overcoming them requires recognizing their roots, avoiding criticism, focusing on constructive growth, maintaining health and wellness, and cultivating positive thinking. People often pretend to be sick to avoid work or responsibility. This is a deceptive habit and shows a lack of motivation or ambition. Excessive use of alcohol or drugs to relieve temporary pain instead of resolving the underlying issue. The habit of a worrying excessively about illness and health. Habit of obsessing over health-related advertisements and media. The fear of losing love stems from an evolutionary need for companionship and security. For men, it originally arose from competition for mates. For women, it arose from the need for protection and provision for children. This fear can lead to jealousy, fault-finding, gambling, lack of self-control and other issues. The fear of old age arises from worries about poverty, loss of independence, and health issues. It can lead to a loss of motivation, initiative and an inferiority complex. It can also cause older people to dress and act younger than their age. The fear of death often comes from religious doctrines about the afterlife and punishment. Religious leaders and sex exploit it to control people. While no one knows what happens after death, evidence suggests that life energy cannot be destroyed, only transformed. Death is a natural and inevitable part of life. Fear of death can lead to madness and lack of purpose. The best remedy is finding purpose and meaning. Symptoms of the fear of death include excessive worrying about dying, lack of purpose, and lack of meaningful activity. It most often affects the elderly but can also affect the young. The best remedy is developing a burning desire for achievement and purpose. Worry is a state of sustained fear caused by indecision. It can be overcome by developing the habit of prompt and firm decision making. Making decisions relieves worry and anxiety. The six basic fears, fear of poverty, criticism, ill health, old age, death, and loss of love, can translate into chronic worry and anxiety. These fears can be conquered by accepting the inevitable and deciding not to worry. For example, accept death and ill health as unavoidable, and resolve not be anxious about them. Negative and destructive thoughts are damaging. They harm the person releasing them by damaging their imagination and subconscious mind. They also repel others and make antagonists. Negative thoughts spread to others and continue to dwell in the subconscious mind of the person releasing them. Success in life requires peace of mind, material needs, and happiness. These come from constructive thought. You can control your mind and thoughts, and make your life what you want through this control. Please do so to avoid slipping by circumstance. Susceptibility to negative influences is a significant obstacle to success and happiness. It must be overcome through self-analysis and building immunity against negative influences. Recognize your willpower and use it. Be aware of the six basic fears and your natural laziness, indifference, and susceptibility to adverse suggestions. 
Avoid negative people and influences. Maintain good health habits. Seek self-reliant people. Refrain from expecting troubles. Overcoming susceptibility to negative influences is critical to success. In summary, worry and anxiety are based on fear and indecision. They can be overcome by prompt decision-making and acceptance of life's inevitabilities. Negative thoughts are destructive but controllable. Susceptibility to negative influences is a significant obstacle to overcome through awareness, willpower, and good habits. Success in life comes from overcoming these obstacles. Most people do not recognize that their thoughts and habits negatively influence them habits. They fail to correct this, making negativity ingrained in their daily lives. A self-analysis test with 115 questions is provided to help gain self-awareness. Read and answer each question honestly by saying the answers aloud. This makes it easier to be truthful with yourself. You have absolute control over only your thoughts. Controlling your thoughts is the most significant ability, allowing you to control your destiny. Failure to control your mind will result in controlling nothing else. Take care of your mind as you would your most prized possession. Use willpower to protect it from harmful outside influences. Negative influencers who poison the minds of others should face legal punishment. Many successful people achieved what they did because they did not believe the naysayers and negative influences. They controlled their minds and destinies, for example, Thomas Edison, F. W. Woolworth, George Washington, and Henry Ford. Mind control comes from self-discipline and habit. You either control your mind or it controls you. The most practical way to control your mind is to focus on a definite purpose and plan. Study any success stories, they control their minds and focus them on goals. With control, success is possible. Napoleon Hill was born in 1883 in Virginia and died in 1970 in South Carolina at age 87. He was in good health until his sudden death and had recently had successful cataract surgery. He was survived by his wife, three sons, two brothers, and one sister. Hill chose to settle in Greenville, South Carolina for the last 13 years of his life. He became famous for his self-help books published during this time. His books on positive thinking and the power of thought became bestsellers, even though he wrote them at an advanced age. Hill acquired much wisdom over his lifetime which he shared in his easily understood books. He continued to grow and stay optimistic into old age. Hill was a proponent of positive thinking, which the world needed when negative thinking was gaining popularity. Hill and his wife are buried in Frederick Memorial Gardens in Gaffney, South Carolina. Their gravesite is marked by a bronze plaque and shaded by a maple tree. The cemetery also contains a Christian monument with symbolic designs representing human striving and spiritual themes. The monument provides a metaphor for Hill's life's work. In summary, Napoleon Hill lived a long, productive life during which he shared his wisdom and advocacy for positive thinking through his successful self-help books. His lasting impact is represented by his gravesite and his symbolic monument near where he was laid to rest. The passage describes a concrete arch resembling a parabolic trajectory, like a firework shot up into the sky, frozen in an upward thrust. The arch symbolizes humanity's relationship with God in the cycle of life and death, but its dramatic upward curve evokes a sense of individual empowerment and control over one's destiny. This sentiment is reflected in an inscription on the arch that reads, From the earth, man through his efforts soars upward in search of eternal life. The interpretation relates the imagery and message of the arch to Napoleon Hill's philosophy of individual success through purposeful thought and action. The arch's parabolic shape and upward momentum mirror Hill's belief that individuals can rise to heights and shape their future through determination and persistence. Motivational and success-oriented books and magazines were popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and likely influenced Hill. An 1896 pocketbook, How to Succeed, or Stepping Stones to Fame and Fortune by Dr. Orison Sweat Martin, provides examples of rhetorical techniques and ideas that foreshadow Hill's think and grow rich, such as, using inspirational quotations from well-known figures, emphatic, forceful language to inspire readers, emphasizing faith, determination, persistence, and willpower to overcome obstacles and succeed. Discuss how the impossible can become possible through determination and willpower. Quoting Napoleon Bonaparte, Impossible is a word only to be found in the Dictionary of Fools. This is similar to Hill's cutting the word impossible out of the dictionary. Hill blended these kinds of narrative and rhetorical techniques with the practical principles of success he developed through research to create Think and Grow Rich. An excerpt from Chapter 15, Willpower, provides examples of these techniques and shows how similar earlier works may have influenced Hill. In summary, Hill did not invent motivational and success literature, but built upon earlier traditions and works combining narrative-slash-rhetorical techniques with practical success principles in a compelling and impactful way. 
Think and Grow Rich, echoed and perpetuated ideas and strategies found in these earlier resources. Here is a summary of the author's key ideas and themes, the power of determination, persistence, and a strong will can help one overcome obstacles and achieve remarkable success. Many famous and accomplished individuals persevered in the face of difficulties and naysayers. Faith in one's abilities and vision is essential. You will likely make it happen if you believe you can achieve something. Self-belief is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Difficult tasks, hard work, and constant action are required for success and accomplishment. There are no shortcuts. Fortune favors the bold who roll up their sleeves and put their shoulders to the wheel. Circumstances and luck have little to do with success. Success is created and earned through continuous effort and determination. While chance may play some role, our outcomes primarily result from our choices and actions. Naysayers and doubters should be ignored. Their skepticism says more about them than about what is possible. The seemingly impossible can be achieved with determination, vision, and perseverance. Success, while often difficult to attain, can become self-perpetuating and lead to further triumphs and opportunities through momentum and snowball effects. However, continued hard work and effort are required to maintain success. Inspirational examples of notable individuals overcoming adversity through determination and willpower show us what humans are capable of. If they can achieve greatness, so can we. Their stories can ignite our motivation and determination. The author highlights these themes through many examples and stories of determined individuals who overcame difficulties to achieve remarkable success and accomplishments against the odds. The message is that persistence and determination can triumph over obstacles and adversity. Success is possible if we cultivate self-belief and work continuously toward our goals and vision. Here's a summary, the poem is about overcoming naysayers and accomplishing something others say cannot. The speaker encounters people who tell him his goal is impossible. However, he remains determined and optimistic. He buckles in and gets to work with a smile. Though thousands may doubt him and point out the potential dangers and failures, he ignores them. He works toward what others say cannot be done and succeeds. The message is that determination and hard work can overcome criticism and obstacles. Success is possible if you believe in yourself and your abilities. The author expresses gratitude for the genealogical research done by Rhonda Darby and the biographical sketch of Dan D. Halpin's father written by Dan D. Halpin. The author also thanks Joseph Isaac Valenzuela for pointing out a citation error. The author feels deep gratitude for his late parents, John and Vivian Cornwell, who nurtured his curiosity and supported him. The author also owes debt to his in-laws, the late David Martin and Thelma Martin, for their love and values. The author wishes to thank four special people, D. Oliver Bowman, his 10th grade English teacher, Dr. Rob Roy McGregor, his high school teacher, Professor Charles Cornwell, and Professor Tony Abbott. They imparted in the author a love of learning and achievement. The author thanks his wife, Betty, and daughters, Johanna and Ann Ross, for their love, support, and belief in this book. They inspire the author to complete this work. Endnotes, at age 25, Hill interviewed Andrew Carnegie, who told Hill the secret to success over three days. Carnegie wished for Hill to share the principles of success with others. Arthur Nash was a minister turned garment businessman. He founded Arthur Nash Company and wrote The Golden Rule of Business. Stuart Austin Weir was an attorney, engineer, inventor, and writer. He was Hill's closest friend and confidant. Jesse Grant Chaplin founded LaSalle Extension University. Hill offered his services to President Woodrow Wilson during World War I. Wilson was impressed by Hill's work. Think and Grow Rich has influenced many leaders, including Manuel L. Quezon, President of the Philippine Commonwealth. Hill interviewed over 500 successful individuals over 20 years. His work led to Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill studied and interviewed many successful business leaders and philanthropists over decades, including four U.S. presidents. Some of these individuals, though fascinating, may be obscure today. So Hill provided additional biographical details about many of them in his notes to give readers more context, bring these historic figures to life, and convey Hill's excitement in learning from them. William Wrigley Jr. started selling soap and baking powder, then pivoted to selling chewing gum with incentives. By 1908, his gum company's sales reached $1 million. John Wanamaker opened one of the first department stores, employing advertising to market the new concept. He also served as U.S. Postmaster General. George S. Parker, with his brother Charles, founded Parker Brothers Game Company. George invented over 100 games himself, including Monopoly. E. M. Statler built the first hotels with private baths and running water in every room. His company's motto was the customer is always right. 
Henry L. Doherty led a holding company for over 100 utilities and oil companies with over $1 billion in assets. He pioneered employee profit sharing. Cyrus H. K. Curtis founded Ladies Home Journal and the Saturday Evening Post, building them into hugely successful magazines. George Eastman made photography accessible to the masses with the Kodak and Brownie cameras. He gave away much of his fortune to universities and charities. John W. Davis served in several government roles, including Solicitor General, and once ran for U.S. President. He was a U.S. Supreme Court attorney. Wilbur Wright got the idea for powered human flight after observing buzzards. With his brother Orville, they built and flew the first successful airplane. William Jennings Bryan was a charismatic order who ran for U.S. president three times. He was a prosecutor in the Scopes Monkey trial. Dr. David Starr Jordan was the world's leading expert on fish. He named over 2,500 species. He later led the World Peace Foundation. Daniel Willard served on the U.S. Naval Academy's Board of Visitors and chaired the War Industries Board. King Gillette invented the disposable razor blade and built a successful razor company. John D. Rockefeller built Standard Oil into America's first great business trust, which controlled much of the oil industry. He gave away much of his fortune to charitable causes. Frank A. Vanderlip was a financial journalist who became a banker. He chaired the committee that sold war savings certificates in World War I. F. W. Woolworth opened some of the first five and dime stores, pioneering volume buying and merchandising. His company eventually had over 1,000 stores. Colonel Robert A. Dollar was a Scottish immigrant who built a thriving lumber and shipping business, operating many ocean vessels. Edward A. Feline, with his brother Lincoln, made Feline's department store famous. Feline's pioneered new retail concepts like automatic markdowns, charge accounts, and branch stores. Edwin C. Barnes was born in 1876 and died in 1954 at 78. He served as a business associate of Thomas Edison for over 15 years. This close relationship helped him overcome many obstacles and setbacks. Barnes had a strong desire to work with Edison. Even though he had no money or experience, his perseverance eventually led Edison to hire him. Barnes' desire and determination were so strong that Hill estimated it could have been worth between $25 to $37.5 million in today's dollars. The story of Barnes illustrates Hill's concept of transmutation, the process of converting thoughts into physical action and results. Barnes became very wealthy through his work with Edison. He developed real estate, including a luxurious subdivision in Florida. Hill dedicated his book Law of Success to Barnes, Andrew Carnegie, and Henry Ford. Hill and Barnes were close friends for many years. Barnes demonstrated a kick to a hat held shoulder high, showing his vigor even at an advanced age. Edison, despite being 35 years older, demonstrated the same feat. The key message is that desire. Determination and persistence can pay off tremendously, just as it did for Edwin C. Barnes. His close relationship with Edison and success in business demonstrated the power of transmuting one's thoughts and dreams into reality. Napoleon Hill met with and organized the interviews of over 500 successful people to develop the law of success. An uncle of R.U. Darby is the only person identified by name in Think and Grow Rich about whom little biographical information could be found. William Rainey Harper was the first president of the University of Chicago. He emphasized innovation and establishing new areas of study. Henry Ford introduced the assembly line, the Model T, and the V8 engine. He ran unsuccessfully for Senate but considered running for president. Napoleon Hill had a lifelong interest in education. He attended business school and law school but did not graduate. He founded and was involved with several educational institutions and received an honorary doctorate. Jennings Randolph knew Napoleon Hill in 1922 and praised Hill's philosophy of achievement. The Chicago Fire of 1871 destroyed much of the city, including Hill's possessions in storage. However, Hill persevered to complete Think and Grow Rich. Marshall Field started as a dry goods clerk but built Marshall Field and Company into a major department store. He was a philanthropist who supported the University of Chicago. Andrew Carnegie gave away over $1 billion, equivalent to over $3.5 billion today. Practical dreamers like Thomas Edison, George Whelan, and Guglielmo Marconi pursued their dreams and achieved success. Marconi invented wireless telegraphy and the radio. Does this summary cover the key highlights from the notes? Let me know if you want me to clarify or expand the summary in any way. In the 19th century, scientists believed in the existence of ether, an invisible medium that permeated the universe. Through ether, light and other forms of radiation were thought to travel. The Michelson-Morley experiment and Einstein's theory of relativity disproved the existence of ether. Hill's original terminology in Think and Grow Rich reflects the metaphysical beliefs of his time. 
some terminology has been updated in revised editions to make the book more accessible to modern readers, but the core ideas remain the same. The oak sleeps in the acorn is a quotation from James Allen's As a Man Thinketh, meaning we become what we think. Hill was familiar with Allen's inspirational works. The Dreamer president was FDR. Hill advised FDR and suggested the phrase The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The Tennessee Valley Authority was one of FDR's visionary projects. O. Henry, the pen name of William Sidney Porter, discovered his literary talents while in prison for embezzlement. Hill's foundation initially aimed to teach the principles of success to prisoners. Infinite intelligence is Hill's term for God or a supreme being. Hill sees this intelligence at work in the lives of Jesus, Gandhi, and Muhammad. Though Hill's perspective is Judeo-Christian, his view of infinite intelligence is non-sectarian. Thomas Edison, the tramp inventor, is an example of persistence and determination in the face of failure. Charles Dickens suffered hardship as a child when his father was in prison for debt. Dickens was forced to work at a shoe polish factory. This experience gave him sympathy for the disadvantaged, reflected in his novels. Dickens also suffered heartbreak over his unrequited love for Maria B. Dwell. Once the subconscious mind accepts an idea, it will work toward attaining the object of that idea. This is how faith leads to success. Hill selling his son the idea that his deafness would be an advantage helped the boy develop persistence and determination. Though technology like hearing aids was limited then, Hill's son went on to success. The singer Ernestina Schumann-Hein contributed her success to her indomitable will. Through repetition of thought, she harnessed the power of faith. All language is imperfect, but Hill's insights into how thoughts and faith can influence the subconscious mind to develop new abilities and means of communication are valuable. Terms like vibration of thought should not be taken too literally. Repeated reading and reflection are needed to grasp Hill's meaning entirely. Peel and Stone have popularized positive thinking and many motivational speakers, but Hill pioneered this philosophy. Hill respected religion but disliked dogmatism that limits direct communication with infinite intelligence. Examples show how Hill's principles have led to success. Bruce Lee wrote that his definite chief aim to become a famous, wealthy martial arts film star, and achieve this before his early death. Gandhi epitomized using thought and mind to change the world through non-violent civil disobedience. His moral influence and example may endure. Hill foresaw modern practices like participatory management, labor management cooperation, productivity programs, and profit sharing. The number 13 for his principles was probably met as an attention grabber, though Hill was not superstitious. He believed in natural law, not miracles. J.P. Morgan was the most influential figure in American finance, reshaping railroads, helping create GE and International Harvester, and forming U.S. Steel, the first billion-dollar corporation. The government sued to break up U.S. Steel as a monopoly, but the Supreme Court disagreed. Repeating an idea, every day, in every way, I am getting better and better, a million times, as Gue recommended, shows the power of auto-suggestion and desire-slash-faith to influence health and success positively. Visualization, as used by Jack Nicholas, also demonstrates this. Writing down instructions and reviewing them strengthens their effect. Discussion over dinner with successful entrepreneurs who carry Hill's quotes showed that his principles and techniques have led to success in business. Correspondence schools and modern self-instruction show the value of specialized knowledge. Self-discipline is required to gain knowledge from home study. General education provides a good start, but practical knowledge comes from life experiences and observations. The Internet provides specialized knowledge, but experience, judgment, and discernment are still needed. Specialized knowledge, both broad and deep, is critical to success. Correspondence schools require students to pay promptly for their courses. Requiring payment, whether or not the student is doing well, encourages students to complete the course rather than drop out. Correspondence schools need to emphasize this more. Their collection departments provide invaluable training in decision-making, promptness, taking action, and developing the habit of finishing what one starts. The summary is coherent and captures the essence of the key ideas and arguments presented in the original passage. Lionel Richie, the singer-songwriter, described creative imagination as like having radio stations playing in his head. The melodies come out of nowhere. He considers God as co-writer, giving him a gift to create music only he can produce. Initially, Hill devoted a lengthy section to promoting Coca-Cola and its stimulative effects. Coca-Cola's founder, Asa Candler, was an entrepreneur who set goals, stuck to plans, worked hard, and was determined. Though lacking in formal education, he built a successful business through perseverance. He gave generously to educational causes later in life. Philip D. Armour developed Chicago's Union Stockyards and founded Armour & Company, 
a leading meatpacking firm. He and his wife donated nearly $3 million to found the Armour Institute of Technology in Chicago. Hill tells a story demonstrating the power of the subconscious mind, desire, faith, and harmony between minds. Dr. Frank W. Gonzalez affirmed his desire to raise $1 million for his college, and Philip D. Armour pledged the total amount after receiving a vision to do so. Hill predicted opportunities and changes in the radio industry. He foresaw the rise of advertising-supported radio, the demand for higher quality and more helpful content, the need for programs that sold products, and the need for expertise in creating audio content and reaching auditory rather than visual audiences. He encouraged readers to get involved in radio and think of ideas suited to the new medium. The chapter discusses the importance of organized planning and achieving goals. Napoleon, Kaiser Wilhelm, Tsar Nicholas II, and Alfonso XIII failed due to a lack of planning. Successful leaders delegate authority and avoid being selfish, intolerant, and indecisive. Plans should be flexible and practical. The chapter gives an eight-step process for organized planning. Define your purpose or chief aim. Set a deadline. Identify required knowledge. Identify necessary allies. Define the plan's scope. Make a written statement of the plan. Set stages of the plan. Establish a systematic follow-through. Paul Bear Bryant was a famous American football coach who led the University of Alabama to six national titles. He ended his career with 323 wins and only 85 losses. One of Bryant's famous sayings was, When we win, the team did it. When we lose, it was my fault. This exemplified his leadership philosophy. Bryant became coach at age 24 when Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich was first published. Hill felt that newspapers of his time were too focused on advertising and scandal. Hill was ahead of his time in emphasizing networking and relationships. Some criticized Hill's work as too focused on money and self-interest. However, Hill believed in the golden rule and in helping others. In the 1920s, Hill published a magazine promoting these ideas. Hill believed businesses should focus on serving customers, as railroads and streetcars had suffered from poor service. Banks and retailers also improved their service. Gas and utility companies had scowling workers but later provided better service. Taxes and politicians needed to be more problematic. Americans enjoyed more freedom and lower costs of living than elsewhere. Millionaires, though resented, drove economic growth. Some complained of lacking freedom but had much. Dictators in Germany, Italy and Russia lacked freedom. The U.S. had great wealth, with the top 1% owning one-third of assets. However, most lived comfortable middle-class lives. Freedom and opportunity were more valuable than great riches. Democracy despite its flaws was the best system. Moreover, the future could bring greater freedom and abundance through innovation. In summary, Hill promoted service, relationships, and abundance principles that could guide individuals and society to greater prosperity and happiness. Though some of his comparisons and examples reflect the times he lived in, his core messages remain highly relevant today. Remember the possibilities of a country where citizens spend extravagantly on frivolities. Before seeking to undermine capitalism, consider a country where people spend lavishly on greeting cards, cigarettes, movies, sports, gum, and razors. Persistence and sustained effort are required to achieve faith and success. Many successful people faced repeated failures and rejections before succeeding, including Fanny Hurst, Kate Smith, W.C. Fields, Marie Dressler, and Eddie Kenner. Success often comes from self-made breaks resulting from persistence driven by a vital purpose. The love story of King Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson demonstrates the power of persistence and purpose. Despite criticism and obstacles, Edward gave up the throne to Mary Simpson. Their determination to be together, against all odds, is a beautiful example of persistence in the face of opposition. They paid a small price compared to the privilege of expressing their love. Europe would have benefited from more leaders with Edward's humanity, honesty, and willingness to sacrifice for love. In summary, do not underestimate a country of lavish consumers, and remember that persistence, purpose, and sacrifice are required to achieve great things. The story of Edward and Wallace is a stirring example of persistence against all odds. Here is a summary of the key points from the chapter. The mastermind principle refers to two or more people working harmoniously toward a shared goal. It unleashes a powerful force that can help achieve any goal that does not violate universal law or harm others. The mastermind absorbs energy and power from the ether, or what Hill calls the unifying force. This is the mysterious force that connects all things in the universe. The mastermind taps into this energy. Successful individuals like Harvey Firestone, John Burroughs, and Luther Burbank achieved extraordinary success by applying the mastermind principle. 
they collaborated and shared ideas with other talented, creative people. Maintaining a positive, optimistic attitude can boost your health, longevity, and success. Negative, pessimistic thinking has the opposite effect. Self-confidence and self-esteem are vital for well-being and achievement. Sex energy or desire can be harnessed and redirected into creative pursuits or business activities. Controlling and channeling this energy constructively is critical. Neutering or spaying animals, and humans, reduces this creative drive and energy. Entering a meditative, prayerful state of mind can tap you into infinite intelligence or divine guidance. This is how many scientific or business breakthroughs have occurred, as with Dr. Elmer Gates. Quieting the conscious mind allows the creative imagination to function. Successful entrepreneurs like Albert Hubbard, Albert H. Gary, and John H. Patterson employed techniques like deep thinking, visualization, and accessing the creative imagination. Hubbard, in particular, was an influence on Hill. Creative individuals in all fields, like the opera singer Enrico Caruso, can enter a genius mode of heightened imagination and insight. This state often depends on sources of inspiration and stimulation, such as interactions with charming or attractive individuals. The fundamental principles covered in this chapter include harnessing and directing sex energy, tapping into infinite intelligence through creative imagination, achieving a mastermind collaboration, maintaining an optimistic attitude, and entering a genius mode of creativity. Applying these principles, Hill argues, is critical to outstanding success and achievement. Hill refers to a man who has inspired him for over 12 years, though he does not directly name the man. Based on the context, Hill likely refers to Andrew Carnegie, the famous American businessman and philanthropist, though this needs to be more definitively stated. Hill contends this man's success stemmed from more than just business acumen, suggesting his achievements were rooted in a more profound source. Hill refers to the poet James Whitcomb Riley, known as the Hoosier Poet, for his poems depicting rural Midwestern life. Riley struggled with stage fright but became a popular lecturer, finding inspiration for his work through what seemed an almost mystic process. Hill notes that like many creative people, Riley may have relied on narcotics or alcohol to spur his creativity, though ultimately they contributed to his demise. Hill mentions James J. Hill, a successful railway magnate and financier. He notes that common table salt exemplifies how two toxic elements, sodium and chlorine, can combine to create something beneficial. Likewise, negative emotions can be transformed into positive ones. Hill discusses the power of love, noting evidence that relationships and positive feelings can have physical and mental health benefits. He refers to techniques for cultivating positive emotions and overcoming negative ones. Hill describes the subconscious mind as the connecting link between the conscious and superconscious minds. He notes that the conscious mind is like a guard at the gate, while the superconscious mind is the source of intuition, inspiration, imagination, and insight. The subconscious mind stores information and connects the conscious and superconscious minds. Hill discusses the brain, describing it as an instrument for broadcasting and receiving thought vibrations. He notes that creative imagination is a form of thought which stimulates the creative power of the brain. Mastermind alliances help to stimulate creative imagination through the meeting of minds. Hill describes the sixth sense as providing a door to wisdom and insight. He notes that while the five senses are physical, the sixth sense is mental and intuitive. The sixth sense can be developed through desire, definiteness of purpose, and harmony between the conscious and subconscious minds. The summary outlines Hill's perspectives on the subconscious mind, the power of emotions and relationships, techniques for cultivating positive thinking, the brain, creative imagination, mastermind alliances, and the sixth sense. Hill aims to convey the mental faculties and intuitive powers that underlie human achievement and success. Here is a summary of the incident, in 1879. Thomas Edison's Menlo Park Laboratory complex was largely destroyed by fire. The fire started accidentally in the lamp testing room and gutted Edison's library, office, and machine shop. The fire destroyed years of work on refining and improving the incandescent light bulb as well as work on other inventions. Edison's response to this devastating setback proved his resilience and determination. According to accounts, Edison surveyed the smoldering ruins and said, There is value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. The next day, Edison showed up at the temporary laboratory space he obtained wearing a broad grin. When an associate tried to offer condolences, Edison replied, Do not worry, we have just got rid of much rubbish. He worked around the clock with his assistants to reconstruct work lost in the blaze. Within a month, the makeshift laboratory was operating again. The fire that destroyed Edison's compound at Menlo Park marked a turning point that led to the successful development of a practical incandescent lighting system.
by treating the disastrous fire as a liberating opportunity rather than an impediment, Edison demonstrated courage in the face of adversity and resilience in the aftermath. His determination and action in promptly rebuilding after this significant setback showed why he deserved the title Wizard of Menlo Park. The speed with which Edison recovered from this incident and used it as motivation to improve his work only reaffirmed his reputation as America's most prolific inventor and innovator. In summary, the fire at Edison's Menlo Park Laboratory in 1879 destroyed years of work but catalyzed for Edison to start over, burning up his mistakes. Edison's resilience, determination, and optimism in rebuilding after this disaster reaffirmed his status as a pioneer in innovation. By turning this devastating setback into an opportunity, Edison showed why he deserved renown as the Wizard of Menlo Park. Intestinal bathing refers to maintaining bowel regularity and health through adequate water and fiber intake and may involve enemas or colonic treatments. Napoleon Hill's famous statement Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve encapsulates his philosophy that our thoughts and beliefs shape our reality and what we can accomplish. This has become a famous motivational phrase. The story of King Croesus illustrates that true happiness comes from good fortune, not just wealth alone. Croesus was a wealthy king who learned this lesson. The brain functions like broadcasting and receiving stations for thought. It absorbs energy from the universe and is stimulated by our thoughts and senses. Intemperance from alcohol or drugs destroys the brain. Sexual transmutation and imagination activate the brain. Successful people often experience a slowdown in productivity and enthusiasm around age 50 due to decreased sex hormone levels and energy as we age. This can be counteracted by maintaining an active mind and body. Lack of ambition, excessive caution, and a tendency to find fault in others are symptoms of a failure consciousness, a mindset opposed to success. Successful people maintain an open and eager mind. The chemistry of the mind refers to the biological effects in the brain produced by our thoughts, emotions, and habits, for good or ill. Our mental state has real physical consequences. Maintaining a positive and open mental attitude promotes health and success. The sixth sense refers to intuition, insights, and hunches from beyond the conscious mind. According to Napoleon Hill, it is a connection to infinite intelligence. The sixth sense develops from creative imagination, organized planning, and persistence applied to achieving a definite primary purpose. Developing and using the sixth sense leads to more significant accomplishments. However, abuse or misuse of this sense can lead to inaccurate insight and poor decision-making. Hill recommends verifying intuitions and hunches through facts and evidence. Smith, Owen, 294 South African Diamond Mines, 62-63 South Improvement Company, 61 Specialization, The Formula for Choosing, 140 Steel Trust Pool. 61 Stockman's Last Roundup, The, 168 Stone, Clement, 365 Stone, Hinson Wilhelm, 365 Stone, William Clement, Success in My Way, 365 Stout, William, 44-46, 81, 84, 335 Strang, Lewis C. Study Course on Hill's Philosophy, 349 Draft Chapter for Hill, 350 to 52 plan for the magic ladder to success with Woodrow Wilson 315 strang Ruth Hill secretary 350 to 52 strengths capitalizing on 124 stress adverse effects of 368 subjective mind 211 to 12 substitution transmutation of thought by 207 success elements of 11 success Hale's definition 11 success four stages of 291 to 92 success formula, 6 step, 28 success habits, 10, 291 to 92 success philosophy acceptance, 21 22 the basic premise, 11 for business, 316 scope, the timelessness of, 20 strang draft chapter on, 350 to 52 success magazine found, 325 success popularity, 1921, 23 success through a positive mental attitude, stone slash hill, 365 Suggestion, or Auto-Suggestion, 53-54 Susan Cooden, 271-72 Swinton, David, 358 Switzer, Maurice, You Are Too Old, 290 Symptoms of Persistence, The 16, 170-73 Synthetic Imagination, 101-3, 191, 211, 226 In Business, 102 Defined. 101 Mastermind Principle, Behind, 105 Organized Plans, In Development of, 108 and Passion, 199 Temper, Loss of, 252 Temper, Uncontrollable, 250 Temptation, 
meeting, 87 to 88 10 mind stimuli, 192 thanks for the opportunity, Switzer, 290 think and grow rich clubs, 348 think and grow rich philosophy the basis for Hill's books, lectures, 349 factors, 17 not guaranteed to lead to riches, 17 practical value of, 11 sixth sense is the apex of, 227 scope, timelessness, 20 success popularity, 1921 Thomas, lol, popularity, 2021 thrift, the habit of, 290 timidity, 245, 250 dm, university workshops, 349 to Lions International Club, 284 to 86 Tolstoy, Leo, 182 Townsend, Frank M, 2, 22 Poverty Stricken Youth of, 368 Trowbridge, Alexander, 312 Truman, Harry S, 50, 290 Wayne, Mark, 5, 198 to 99 TV Guide Cover Photo, 326 Tyranny of Opinion, 150 Understanding the Weaknesses of Others, 290 Unity School of Christianity, 355, 359 University Workshops, Circular from, 349 U. S. Steel Corporation Charles M. Schwab's Persistence, 58 Creation and Problems of, 59 to 65 J. P. Morgan's Roll, 60, 335 Hill, Efforts to Get Advertising Accounts, 325, 347 Vanderbilt, Cornelius, 5, 59 Vanderbilt, William Henry, 5, 298 Bonsetti, Bartolomeo, 33 V8 Ford Engine Introduction, 20 Villainy, Types of, 250 The Vision of Possibilities, 276 Visualization versus Creative Inspiration, 337 Jack Nicholas Uses, 336 Using Faculty of Imagination, 67 to 68 Virtues, Opposite of Weaknesses, 144 The Virtue of Sex Energy, 203 Vocational Guidance Guidance, Formula 4, 139 Wallace, Henry C., 84 Wanamaker, John, 317 to 18 Ward, Artemis, 33 Warren, Earl, Quoted, 328 Washington, George, 153, 157 Welch, Jack, 356 Wesley, John, 234 Westinghouse, George, 32 Where the Mind Goes the Man Follows, 52 Wishes vs. Burning Desires, 43, 48 Woodrow Wilson Institute, 325 Wren, Christopher, 350 Wright, Frank Lloyd, 350 World War II, Effect on Books Success, 18 YWCA Graduation Address, 22 to 24 Zola, Emil, 340 Here is a summary of the requested items, indecision, doubt, and fear will not function in presence of infinite intelligence. Infinite intelligence communicates through the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is part of a person's being. Skybow Castle is Andrew Carnegie's estate in Scotland. Kate Smith was an American singer best known for her rendition of God Bless America. Socrates was an ancient Greek philosopher who emphasized courage in decision-making. The Spanish flu epidemic of 1918 was a deadly influenza pandemic that spread worldwide. Specialized knowledge comes from five sources, experience, education, observation, experimentation, and from a mastermind group. The ten mind stimuli are the sources of negative and positive thoughts. They must be controlled and directed for success. W. Clement Stone was a self-made millionaire and philanthropist who co-authored success through a positive mental attitude with Napoleon Hill. The stream of power is life's unseen and unheard vibration, it must be harmonized to achieve success. The string theory posits that the universe consists of vibrating strings that form elementary particles. This theory aims to unify quantum mechanics and general relativity. The subconscious mind consists of a person's entire mental process. Aid from the subconscious mind can be obtained by sending it a vibration of faith and confidence. The sixth sense is part of the subconscious mind. Success consciousness involves directing one's mind to serve practical ends. It requires control of the stimuli that feed the mind. The six-step success formula outlines achieving prosperity through a definite purpose backed by faith and persistence. The 17 success principles are the rules for achievement that Hill discovered in his 20 years of research. Willpower and persistence are essential for success. Willpower is the basis of persistence. Both are developed through the transmutation of sex energy. Visualization is a technique for impressing thoughts upon the subconscious mind through mental images. Written objectives made clear to the subconscious mind through visualization and repetition are essential for success. 
Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is considered the most influential book on achieving success and accumulating wealth. It has inspired millions of readers since its publication in 1937. The book identifies 13 principles used by successful people, based on Hill's 25 years of research studying over 500 self-made millionaires. The principles revolve around having a burning desire, establishing a clear vision and concrete plans, building a mastermind group, learning from adversity, and cultivating faith and persistence. Reviewers and fans praise the book for its timeless and practical advice. The concepts and stories have inspired many readers to change their thinking, pursue their dreams, build successful businesses, and achieve financial independence. The book has produced many successful entrepreneurs and millionaires. Readers continue to find new insights from the book with each reading. The editor, Ross Cornwell, provides additional historical context and explanations in his editions appendices, footnotes, and endnotes. This helps bring further meaning and understanding of Hill's principles of success. Mastermind groups and communities continue to form worldwide based on the concepts taught in Think and Grow Rich. The book's influence and impact continue to spread and transform lives. The principles in the book apply to achieving success in all areas of life, not just finances and business. They teach life lessons around personal development, motivation, and spiritual growth. Ross Cornwell's original version provides Napoleon Hill's original and unedited ideas. This original version, biographies, and historical context are great ways to introduce Hill's work to people. There is a reason why Hill's work continues to be popular many years after its first publication. Cornwell's version highlights the rich history surrounding Hill's work. Book link, click here.